Okay, great. So I get that, you know, you had this desire. How did you take it from being a desire uh, of a teacher who's just kind of like, you know, only been training for a little while to actually making it a real product that helps parents? So in terms of like starting that journey, it was just about diving in. I remember like the fir- the hardest step was to actually sort of go against the norm of, of continuing with teaching and actually sort of handing, handing in that resignation and starting the whole journey. Mm. And that's what I did. So I, I just sort of mustered up the courage and uh, I gave my letter of resignation to the head teacher. And when she found out that I was, I was, I was about to have, my wife's about to have a baby, she said, uh, if I was your mother, I'd say you're making a very silly decision. <laughs> And I thought to myself, well, alhamdulillah, you're not my mum. <laughs> so, um, so I just, you know, that's, that's the first thing. And it does often take a lot of courage to, to as you say, to sort of make that jump. Um, so what, what was then, it that gave you the courage, like, at that point? Because, like I said, most people in their first term of teaching would have thought, listen, let me give this a year or two, and then after that I'll check. Like, how did you, how did you find that courage to do that? I think I had a lot of clarity. I, it was very clear to me that I didn't want to become a teacher in the normal sense. I was, uh, especially in London, I saw teaching as more behavior management than teaching. Um, so I had that, that, that push factor. And I had also the calling factor as well, because, you know, after spending a short time in school, I, I realized that it wasn't the kind of environment that I wanted you know, for my life, generally speaking, I wanted to sort of create a life around something that I'm very passionate about. Mm. Um, and so that was a pull factor as well for me. So the two together, alhamdulillah, really helped to, uh, to make that happen. Amazing. And so then you, you had the courage, you took the step, mashallah. And, and what was the first kind of things that you did? Um, so the first thing I did was it actually took about seven months or so, eight months before the first products came out. So initially, mm. I sort of, sort of, yes, you are, you, you don't know what you're doing. You start off um, sort of trying to put things together. Uh, figuring out what you're meant to be doing, that sort of thing. I didn't have a clear idea at that time in terms of products of what I'd make. Um, but then, you know, as time was going by and push came to shove, and I thought, you know what, well, whatever I've got, let me just put it out there right now and let's just see how it goes. So we, we produced the first three products, uh, of which none none of which survived today in their original form. Mm. So that's always a good sign. What that was, always... what was like some of the first products you did? So we made a, uh, a HIF logbook. Uh, which was designed for, to help children memorize. We've now just just now we've actually just uh, discontinued that, and we're we're going to revise that into a, put that into a new edition of Jazamma. Mm-hmm. And we had a Sira timeline, which again we kind of dropped and then moved into a different product. They they sort of moved into different products. They didn't sort of completely die out. Um, and we had some incorporated with pillars, which was well. The less said about that, the better. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of my ideas that kind of failed. But there you go. Um, and that's what it's all about. It's a, it's a learning journey. You're going to make mistakes. You embrace the mistakes and you move on. And um, that's what we did. So the main thing was getting out there as quickly as possible to market. And I remember our first road trip. We went to different stores um, and showed them uh, our products and um, you know have, had a good response. We either we either got a yes or we got a or a maybe or we got a no. Or, but either way, we learned something, and that was really uh, important. So you know any kind of uh, aspiring leaders out there it's just really about getting your ideas out getting your products out um, and letting you know letting the market decide whether they like it or not and that gives you a lot of feedback on how to move forward hmm. so had you done any business before then no not really no so, not i mean because now like you know learning groups amazing not only in its brand in its design in its products but also in terms of its distribution i've seen it in different countries all over the place i mean you guys are in over 30 countries right that's right. Yeah. yeah. So like all over the place. So this is not like a small kind of thing where like I've done in the past where you go to China, you get some product. This is like you going full force design everything. And so there's so many different elements to the business, including distribution, pricing, retailing, all this stuff. Like how did you get to grips with all this stuff without any background experience in it? Um, through first hand experience, to be honest, I did have some advisors. I did had had some I had some early mentors that were really helpful. Um, not specifically in my field. But they, they were very helpful. They were successful business people and they did help me out with some good advice in the beginning. But the majority of it, to be honest with you, was trial and error. Um, it's trying things, realizing, you know, you get burnt and you've got to realize you've got to take a different course um, and just, you know, capitalizing on the things that work pretty well. So it's it's that. But the more that you're going out there and doing it and the faster you're failing, you know, the more the quicker you'll succeed. 